welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is rotary machining. So the rotary machining toolpath, uh, the best way to think about it is it's kind of like a cam follower. Um, cam is in the, uh, the mechanical uh, construct. Um, it basically will take the tool and will follow this exact shape as the tool is turning. Uh, the way we program it is similar to some of the recognition toolpaths you see from SolidCam, things like 3D eye machining and uh, 3D milling, where they recognize the shape of the tool of the part, and the tool follows that shape. Uh, so we'll see exactly uh, what I'm referring to when we actually get into the program. So uh, I've already brought in this um, this little screw impeller thing, and uh, we're going to add the rotary machining toolpath to it. So I'm just going to right click, add milling operation, rotary machining for axis brings up the toolpath here. Okay, and the coordinate system, like other fourth or fifth axis toolpaths, it's just using Mac 1 position 1. So you can see that there I have it set up for the rotary. Geometry, the machining surfaces is literally just the model itself. So again, like any other solid-based toolpath, target-based toolpath from SolidCam, all we're going to do is just choose the solid itself, and that is the geometry. Um, how we do things a little differently here is because this is rotary machining and it's going to follow the shape of the tool, I can actually tell it to either go along, and you see in the bottom left corner, that's going along parallel to the uh, to the rotary axis, or I can go around. And again, if we see those red toolpaths there, that's going around the rotary axis. That'll actually spin the axis as the tool is machining. Okay. Uh, machining area, I could actually just go right to the limits of the of the part itself, so it'll just recognize the shape of the part and just go right from the tips. Uh, or more in reality, I probably would have, let's say, uh, this would be probably set up center to center, or I might be holding it on one side on jaws, and then there's a tailstock there. Many ways that this could be set up. The idea I'm getting at is that I might want to limit the travel of the tool. So let's just say I do user defined, and I'll say start from this face right here and end at this face right here. But I could have easily chosen any other face here. Let's say I just wanted to do the center area or whatnot. I could have just chosen any two faces and it would have actually just put this rotary toolpath in between those two faces. Okay, and then angular limits, uh, we have start angle and we have end angle. So if I wanted to just limit the travel of the tool uh, in terms of the rotary, I could put those angles in there. Okay, now the tool itself, we can choose any type of tool. I'm just going to use my uh, my half inch flat end mill here. Levels, like we've seen before in previous videos on fourth axis, the clearance area doesn't have to be a plane. Here it could be a cylinder. So I'm actually going to retract to a cylinder of let's say three in, three inches in radius from the rotary axis. Toolpath parameters, I chose a round, so I'm actually just going to tell it my step over across the part. As we're stepping over, the part is turning, so I'm literally just stepping over the part as I go. Tool axis control, again, we've seen this before. Fourth axis, I basically just have to tell it what is my, my rotary axis. In this case, it's the Z axis. The rest of this is similar to fourth and fifth axis or HSS toolpaths, where we have a link where we control the lead and lead out, link between slices, gouge check, roughing and more, all sorts of similar functions we've seen in previous toolpaths. Now, if I generate this toolpath, just do a save and calculate. Okay, and there we go. So I put in a step over of 50 thou, and it steps along the part 50 thou, starting at the red sphere, and it steps over across the entire part. So we do a quick solid verify on that. Now, as always, solid verify is just showing the tool moving, but in reality, it would be the rotary that's moving. You can see as that goes across, it actually is machining the functions. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's sort of like cam following. As it goes past that first cylinder there, you'll see it start to actually take more of a shape of the actual part. You'll see the taper, 
you'll see some of those, um, those the impeller taking shape as well. Okay, and I'm going to stop it. And just for visual representation, I'm actually just going to increase this to 100. As you can see, it takes everything. So if that tool could dip into the keyway, it does. So this is a very good uh, rotational roughing toolpath. You could finish using this as well, but um, uh, because of the power of this toolpath, I usually recommend the roughing and the finishing, whichever one you really need. So I'll let this just take shape. Okay. And as we get to the impeller, you'll see that it actually starts to step along the impeller. Sort of looks like scallops and then actually the blades themselves, as it rotates, if the tool can get in there, it will actually machine out some of that blade. Okay, so that is the around function. Now, I actually have another part. <clears throat> so this is a, another type of part that yields itself very nicely to rotary machining. This is the piston from a Wankel engine or a rotary engine. And the way I basically program that is again the model itself and I did a long so a long will have toolpath passes that are uh, parallel to the rotary axis okay and let's just go to toolpath so as on a long rotary machining toolpath I don't have a step over what I have is just a step angle so I've told it to increment by one, uh, one degree with each pass. And if we take a look at that, essentially with each pass, it zigzags back and forth to machine the surface. As you can see also, it takes the shape of the little cavity right there. So the previous part was around, this one is along. So as a rotary, you have both those functions there. So I have one final part. Okay, so another screw impeller. And I'm going to simulate that in machine sim. So as you can see, in reality, the part is actually the one that rotates. I haven't put any limits on there, so it is actually continuously rotating. I set my parameters to one way. So the tool is in constant engagement with the part. As you can see, it's starting to take the tapered shape. As it gets closer to the actual impeller blades, we'll see that it actually roughs out as much as it can from those impeller blades. So just another in the series of fourth or fifth axis toolpath. Uh, they are driven, in this case, by the solids, but uh, all the functionality is exactly the same. Any other questions on this topic or any related topics, you can always view the videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, or submit a ticket with your parts and your questions to the e-ticket system. Thanks for watching.